Well, good morning, everybody. It's nice to be with you again this morning. I hope you had a, a good day. You're doing well today. We had a beautiful day yesterday. The temperature was just beautiful. I uh, hope you're able, able to get outside and enjoy the sun and the nice temperatures. You know, this time of year, it's always a little bit sad for me. You see, uh, we are almost at the midpoint of the year. And next week will be the summer solstice. And if you're an outdoor person like me, you know, you like going outside, you like doing stuff outside, uh, it means that we're almost at the point where we will have the longest amount of sunlight in a day. That's right. After next week, the days are going to start to get shorter and shorter. That's a bummer. Remember those days where at 4.30 in the afternoon, it was already getting dark? Well, we're now at the longest time period of the year, and it's just downhill from here. <laughs> oh, well, that's kind of just the way it goes. Um, so what I wanted to do first was I wanted to give everybody just a little bit of a review of, uh, you know, what we've been doing. So I want to take a minute, uh, review what we have been learning about. And if you remember right, we're in a series, uh, and the series is called Stormwatch. And it's all about the storms of life. And we've made some connections with how storms of life are sometimes similar to the other kinds of natural storms that we may have heard about, or even some of us may have even experienced. Storms like uh, tornadoes, or hurricanes, or floods, fires, um, even, you know, ironically, pandemics, which we're kind of going through right now. So let's go through what we've learned so far. In week one, we learned about storm warnings, and that even during the storm, God is in control. Uh, we read in the Old and in the New Testament that God tells us there will be times of trouble. Now, trouble is just another way to say storm. Well, which is just another way to say that there will be times that are hard. And that will cause us concern and make us wonder if everything will be okay. Or if everything will ever be normal. Or would we want them to be? I mean, um... It's, it's just, we just don't know. But in God's word, he also says not to worry because he is greater than the storm or he's greater than the trouble. And that's a good thing uh, because many times when a storm hits, we feel a bit out of control. So it's comforting to know that a loving and an all-powerful God is always in control. So that was week one. So, in week two, we learned about the eye of the storm and that God may use storms to get our attention and draw us closer to him. We also asked some hard questions like, why do bad things happen? And why doesn't God fix all the bad things in the world? Surely he can. He's powerful enough to do it. We talked about how a prophet of God, his name was Jonah, went through a big storm, and although he didn't really know what was happening as it was happening, in the end, he trusted God and did draw closer to God. So far, in the first two weeks, we've reminded you that as part of being human and as part of being a middle school student, you can be certain of one thing. When it comes to storms, you're going to be in one of three different places right now, and that's true for all of us. The first place is, well, life is good, but you're about to enter a storm. That's one condition. The other one is, well, you're in the middle of a storm right now. And then the third condition is, you're just coming out of a storm. And that's true for you as middle school students. It's true for us as adults. It's true for everybody. We are in one of those three places all the time. So in week three of this series called Stormwatch. Um, another name for this is called The Aftermath. Uh, one of the things that we've mentioned during the past few weeks is that as part of being someone who trusts in Jesus and believes that Jesus loves us more than anyone and that he has our best interest in mind always, in other words, that you're a Christian, you consider yourself a Christian, that not only are we not exempt from those storms, but many times, they may hit us even harder. Well, at this point in the series, after hearing a lot of that and hearing some of the things that we've said, 
you may be asking yourself some questions, because I know I used to ask these kinds of questions, and sometimes I still do. Here's the first one. Shouldn't being a Christian and following Jesus get you some kind of relief from the storms or from the hard times? Isn't there any kind of immediate benefit from being a Christian? And if not, then, well, what's the point? What's the point in being a Christian and trusting in Jesus and in what he said and how he told us the best way to live is what's the point if you get no benefit from it, right? And when you think about it, it's amazing sometimes that anyone wants to be a follower of Jesus if there's no immediate or visible benefit from it, or worse yet, the storms could be even harder. Um, it, it's amazing that anybody would follow Jesus or consider themselves a Christian. You know, when, when getting ready for the lesson, uh, it reminded me of um, when I was much younger. See, right after I started started to learn how to drive, I was driving back and forth to college and I lived in uh, Long Island, New York, and was going to a school in upstate New York. It's a small town called Oneonta. It was about a four and a half hour drive. It was a very, very pretty drive. Um, I remember how I used to feel when I was driving back and forth, and how I would feel if something happened and I got stuck and I was on my own. Uh, I remember I, I, I felt scared and worried that I was all alone and I might not be able to fix this situation. And that caused a lot of concern. But somehow, and I, I couldn't explain why, but somehow if I was with somebody else, like I had a friend with me or if I was giving somebody else a ride back and forth, um, I didn't worry the same. Uh, the mere fact that I had somebody with me, I had company, made me feel more at ease. Even though the, the situation was the same, I was making the same drive, the same sort of things could have happened, but I didn't have quite the worry that I did as when I was alone. This is how it is when you know, and I, and I mean when you really know that God is always with you through every situation. See, God uses these situations as opportunities, if you let him. Now, opportunities for what, you might ask? Yeah, well, that's the key question. What can God possibly do, or how can he possibly make any good come out of the storm that I'm going through? And that's the question we want, to, want you to know the answer to today. You see, uh, you know, every lesson has its bottom line. And the bottom line for today is God can use the storms of life in ways that we would never expect. In other words, God does not cause the storms to hit us. As a matter of fact, most times we bring that on ourselves by our poor choices. But when they do hit, and they certainly will because we make a lot of bad choices sometimes, but when it does hit, God can use the storm. In the kind of work that I do each day, uh, we have a word for that, and it's called opportunity. And opportunity is one of those strange things. Um, it's like someone knocking on your door. Unfortunately, it's not a loud banging at the door. It's usually a very quiet tap at the door. And many times when you're in a storm, you may not hear that quiet tapping on the door in the middle of all that loud banging that's going on because of the storm. But trust me, it's there. Because in the middle of every storm, there is an opportunity for you and I to really trust in Jesus and to know that he's always with us. And just like I would feel better when I was driving if there was someone else there to go through the situation with me, well, the same thing is true for all of us in storms. See, knowing that a loving God who wants the absolute best for you and I is there with you through the situation, well, that brings a certain amount of calmness and clarity to what's happening. And when that happens, when you get that calmness and you get that clarity, when you're able to look at the bigger picture that's when we hear the quiet tapping at the door. And when we go to the door and we see who it is that's knocking, 
we look face to face with a loving God. And that loving God says, hey, can I come in? I see you going through a hard time and I have just the thing to help. When you answer the door and put your focus on God who wants to help, two things are going to happen. First, you begin to realize that God has your absolute best interest in mind and he will never leave you during the storm. Now, he may not make it go away and it may not get better before it gets worse, but he will be there with you through it all. And the second thing, and here's the best part, when you focus on God during the storm, this sort of magical thing starts to happen. God's character and God's light starts to shine through you. And then other people see it. And when other people see how you handled the storm, they're going to ask you, hey, that was a pretty tough situation. How did you ever manage to get through it? And you know what that is? That's another door opening in your life. It's the door to explain to someone else your trust in Jesus. And that is the number one way people get introduced to a loving God. It's through the real life experiences of others. This kind of reminds me of a poem that I heard a long time ago. You guys have probably all heard it. And it's called um, Footprints in the Sand. And it always makes me think about the big picture when a storm hits. Here's how it goes. One night, a man had a dream. He dreamed he was walking along the beach with the Lord, and across the sky flashed scenes from his life. Now for each scene, he noticed two sets of footprints in the sand, one belonging to him and one belonging to the Lord. When the last scene of his life flashed before him, he looked back at the footprints in the sand. He noticed that at many times along the path of his life, well, there was only one set of footprints. He also noticed that it happened at the very lowest and saddest times in his life, the storms. Well, this really bothered them, the man, and he questioned the Lord about it. Lord, you said once I decided to follow you, you'd walk with me all the way. But I noticed that during the saddest and most troublesome times of my life, there was only one set of footprints. I, I don't understand when I needed you the most, why would you leave me? And the Lord replied, my precious child, I love you and will never leave you. During your times of trials and suffering, when you saw only one set of footprints, well, it was then that I carried you. I love that because it's very, very clear that God's never going to leave us. He's never going to forsake us. And most of the time when we have trouble, it's not him leaving us, it's him carrying us, if you truly trust in him. In God's word, there's a story about the Apostle Paul. Uh, it comes from the book of Acts in chapter 27. You can read it on your own sometimes. It, it's a really good story. I think you'd like it. The story is about Paul and being in one of those situations that we would call a storm. It also happens to be about a physical storm while he was on the boat out at sea. And although the ship and the men on board were fighting the strong winds and the high waves, there was another storm taking place. And that other storm was the one of trust in God. See, Paul knew that no matter what was going on in his life, and no matter what storm there might be, God was with him 100%. And Paul relied on God 100%. The story has an adventure to it. It's, it's pretty cool to read, but the outcome is similar to what we're talking about today. And there's some key points that we should be able to learn from that story and from Paul's experience. The first is that Paul was going through a big storm. It, it wasn't a small one. It wasn't trivial. It was pretty big. And the other is that Paul knew God was with him. He never doubted it. 
Paul heard that quiet knocking, that quiet, quiet tapping at the door during the storm, and he listened, and he relied on God's words to calm him and give him peace of mind. Paul chose to listen to that whisper of God who guided him to remain calm. And finally, the opportunity. You see, all the other people on board were freaking out. But when they observed Paul and how calm he was, well, they were naturally curious and said, Hey, dude, like, what is your deal? Don't you see we're all doomed? Okay, well, they probably didn't use those words, but you got the idea. And that's when Paul got the opportunity to share with all those men, there were over 200 men, who he was and about God who he followed. That's the opportunity that Paul got. Now, he wouldn't have gotten that opportunity had he not gone through that storm. Now, we don't know what happened to each of those people. There's nothing in this story, really, that tells us what happened to each of them. And that is the way life is today. There will be times when you get to share who you are and why you trust in Jesus to guide you through this life. And it's very likely that if you take the chance, the opportunity to trust in God and do that, you may never know the impact it has on others. But be confident about one thing. God is thinking, my good and faithful servant. And if that doesn't sell, send chills up and down your spine, well, nothing will. The best thing we can do as people is to fulfill the purpose that we were created for. And God has made it clear in his word that we were made to reflect God's character, to let God's character shine through us. Sometimes, although a bit difficult and messy, God uses storms to do that. So this series has been, has been about storms, not, not the physical kind, but the ones that we go through in our life. And we hope that as you've gone through this three-week series and as you've learned about storms, you remember that God is in control. Always. He's always in control. Now, in the middle of the storm, just to keep focused on him and just to remember that, you know, even though we may not understand it, God uses those storms as opportunities and if we trust in him and we rely on him, then those opportunities are going to be great. Just like Paul had, we can all have those same opportunities. Even though you may not ever see the outcome of it, it's there. So let's pray. God, thank you for opening our minds to see your greater purpose in our everyday lives. Although we feel uncomfortable in the hard times, those storms that we have, we know that you can work good in these difficult times. I pray for the students to have strength to keep focused on your great love for us before, during, and after all the storms that we may find in our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, everybody. Time to go. Have a great small group. Ask lots of questions. Um, remember your leaders are here to help you with any questions you might have, but participate in those conversations. We are really interested in knowing what's going on in your life and what kinds of storms have you gone through? What kind of storms are you going through? What have you learned in those things? Share that with us because, you know, more than likely some of your other students in your group are going to be able to learn from you and, and you can learn from them. So have a great small group and we'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye.